oh, hey, you're back. I've already masked this. And th those of you that are like, no, we'll never be able to figure out how he did something so complex. <laughs> it's OK. I left half for you. Um, anyway, got all nice and pretty on this side. We're going to come in with our La Rouge tape. And as soon as I find the edge of it, there we go. And very, very simple masking on this. Uh, I don't know, can you still see it if I hold it here? It's okay, Bo-Katan. Bo Gina Carrera's got a better career somewhere else now. Anyway, um, let me go, let me see. There, I can hold it there better. And we use the one thumb as a guide. And bingo, let's see how it looks. Yeah, that's pretty freaking close. Close enough for Mandalorian. The tape knows the way. There we go, and we got that good going there. Now, I want to cut this, but be really careful. You don't want to cut too deep. I use what's called a kiss cut. I'll just hold the blade right there on the edge and then pull against it. You know, well, unless the blade's dull, it doesn't work so good. Um, very lightly score the tape. You don't want to cut, leave cut marks. Granted, the cut mark is going to be right where the paint is. Still, you want to do as little as possible because when you're cutting into stuff, especially fresh paint, that becomes an area it can lift on. So I got that cut right there nicely. And we're going to come in with, this is the, the half inch version of the gold tape. And I just, now I, I like doing this because it's just easier for me to border tape with a small tape like this than it is to come in with the thick tape and border tape it and get it close. Now this one, I could just keep on adding little strips of paint or I could buckle it to the point where I can make that curve. If it was the other direction, it would curve easily, but this tape is not flexible. So unlike other tapes, when you fold this tape in, it doesn't create a little galley that, that, that the paint can go into. So it's pretty good for what I call wrinkle taping. Let me hold this a little better here. I can see better what I'm doing and I'll show you. There we go. If there's an area that's questionable, like it's really close, tear off a little piece of tape, hence the rip tear technique, I call it. Now when I'm trimming, I don't trim to the edge of the tape. The tape is the edge. I'll trim on top. This allows me to cut without scoring the paint. I'm cutting on top of the tape. Always cut on top of the tape. Come in with the bigger tape, tear off a couple of pieces, and just go along Pressing it down. I will be unmasking this when I come back to, I'll, I'll, I'll be remasking this when I do the artwork on it, so I'm not worried about making this all perfectly flat to be cuttable. I'm just masking for effect right now, just to keep paint from getting on my white area. If this is a larger area, yes, I will be using paper, but this is about any larger than this, I'd start bringing in pieces of paper from my tape machine. And FBS is a really great tape machine, by the way. Uh, I just don't happen to have one right here with me. And we'll get this all masked off. And it's amazing how much of this helmet is, I mean, you have to ignore the, the blue, black, and the artwork, but the majority of this helmet is blue. So very small amount of white, even though you really think it's a lot of the helmet. And when you actually see it, you're like, that, really, this is the only part that's white on this whole freaking helmet? It's because the face is the thing you look at the most, so you notice it the most. But yeah, that stays white. Everything else has already been scuffed. I'm going to go ahead and uh, mix up some of the, the um, sealer, Autoborn Sealer Blue. And that's what we're going to use on here. Uh, Autoborn loves to stick to Autoborn, so why would I do anything different? Plus, it's durable, really tough stuff. And, uh, and I have it, so uh, that's its reason. And uh, it, the whole thing is going to go blue. Then we're going to start back masking and adding the darker blue, the silver, the black, gray, and leave the white area. And then it is texture time. So that's it. Very simple masking. Am I worried about the underside? No. Why? Because at the very most, we're going to put a liner in here or we'll come in and spray it with just a neutral black or something. That's, that's most likely. So it's, I'm not making a big deal about the inside of the helmet. Uh, I don't make a big deal about, the only time I mask off this is if it was a real helmet and you had all the padding in there. We don't have that, so I'm not worried about it. Don't make work where there is none. Uh, that's it. We'll come back and get some paint on this sucker.
Okay, I've got the helmet all masked off, and I dragged Chris away from actually really important, uh, like, Createx color stuff. So there's, like, just mayhem out there. People are screaming. Things are on fire. But it's okay That's because right. I get my video finished in this nice, quiet, soundproof room. We're going to go ahead and use the, I said earlier, uh, Autoborn Blue. I gotta, there's actually more than one Autoborn Blue. We're going to use the Process Blue. And I uh, got it all nice and mixed up. Just going to spray the whole thing. Uh, nice even coat of it. We don't really need to make sure it's absolutely flawless on this. There's so much crap going on on this, so probably just going to just get coverage, but That's not like... Coat, coat and a half. Yeah, coat and a half. We don't need to really bury it. We're going to have so much material yeah. on here, but I'm, again, not worried. This is really structural. Yeah. And then... Um, that's about it. I won't need, well, probably is I haven't put this paint aside because yep. when I'm doing the weathering later on. I'll actually be dabbing on with like a brush this same Autoborn Blue to create the illusion that paint's flaking away from the blue underneath. So, enough of me. Time for Chris to paint helmet. Okay, I am waiting for the helmet to dry that Arpen already sprayed for me. It's dry, but I want to give it a little extra dry because I'm going to be doing some masking directly on it. Uh, so in the meantime, I've got all my little resin cast pieces that are actually re resin printed pieces, uh, SLA printed, that I need to uh, base up. Now we already put some 4050 on these as an adhesion promoter, and they're all going to be silver or different stages of black on this, this, uh, this piece. And I, I disassembled it enough I can get different shots. Uh, and I'll be able to like not have to mask on it because this right here will be black with some erosion on it. This part's going to be silver, this part's going to be silver, this part's going to be silver. So all of them get black first no matter what. I'll come in and I've already taken some of that black sealer that, I, that uh, we've actually used on another project earlier. I had it just sitting around and I just loaded it inside the airbrush. This is already reduced down for a spray gun, but you see it's spraying just fine through the clips. It's the nice thing about that, about Auto Air sealer is it sprays very cleanly, whether you're using a spray gun or, or an airbrush. I think it's dry enough so I don't gonna stick it to anything. And just leave it there on the table, be fine. And that's all I'm really going to do is go over, I hit them all with a light coat. Hit them all with a light coat so that it acts a little bit of a tooth for the paint. And then I'll come in and hit it with a wet coat. Hit it with a wet coat without the light coat on there, it can tend to pull or, or run. So you're creating a little bit of what I call glue coat. Does it have to be perfect? No. And I'll tell you why, we're going to be aging and relicking this thing anyway. So I just want to have decent coverage more than anything. And that's pretty much it. It'll dry up nicely. And then uh, I won't even have to mask on this. Uh, I'll be hitting this with the, the Quicksilver as soon as it's dry. And then scuff it a little bit with Scotch-Brite and flick it with some black and maybe flick it with some more silver and just get a nice uh, even texture. But we're going to do that at the end. I'll tell you why. I don't like texturing individual pieces because uh, you can end up doing a different style or a different, all of a sudden it doesn't match. And realize the abuse happened to the whole helmet. So we're gonna literally put everything, have it, everything done and then do the texturing and the, the patina work all at the same time. So let me get these all black and then uh, they'll be sitting there drying while I start masking on the helmet to do the face graphics. And I gotta mask off the metal areas of the helmet because you get to go black as well. I also have some black graphics on the helmet. So I'm gonna do it sequentially. So I'm spraying the black for the metal, at the same time spraying the black black for the graphics. That way I'll just leave this airbrush full of black, don't have to clean it out, don't have to refill it. Again, time saving. Little things like that make a huge difference in affordability as well as making deadlines on a project. So I'll see you back here in a few minutes. Okay, I had mentioned earlier about sequential masking and not wasting time doing stuff. And uh, there's always like different paths you can go on when, when masking something. Which color am I going to do next, whatever. And, and I always tell people think ahead, uh, like a chess game. Plan your strategy. But like a football game, you always have your audibles. In other words, when your strategy doesn't work out, you always be prepared to change it. In this situation, I really, really, really wanted to unmask this, so I did. Not realizing that I was gonna come into a darker blue here and here. Now back here doesn't matter, but here is right next to it. So now I gotta remask and I'm like, damn it. We all make mistakes. But 
I got air, black air already in my brush, so maybe I should just take advantage of this time to lay out all the black stuff I need to do on this helmet and do that with it unmasked. Then, while the black is curing, I can butt up against the back here away from the black and I can do my, my darker blue. So uh, there's always a way around it. Um, when you make a mistake, you always just act like that's what you meant to do, never let them see you sweat. It, it's one of those six of one, half a dozen or another. But the fact that you think that way, if you catch yourself doing that all the time, good. It means you're actually thinking. You're not like just watching TV or listening to music and not, not paying attention to what you're painting. You should always be constantly, not just evaluating. If you painted something, a dozen times, like I'm doing a bunch of guitars right now for Fender, and uh, actually Charvel, Fender owns them, I, I, 20 of the same design. I am changing up the way I do them, and the extra challenge is to make sure they all still look the same, but I'm figuring out better ways of doing it, so the last five of the 20 I'm working on right now, I'm actually doing faster than the very first prototype I did. I can always, I can do five in the speed it took me to do the first one that I did as a prototype. That's because even though it ain't broke, I'm still trying to fix it. So stay away from that phrase, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. That's, the, the reason that accent's attached to it is appropriate. It, it, do not do that. Make sure you're always trying to fix something. Now, that being said, don't redundantly be reinventing the wheel. Don't just go back to square one on everything. You know, learn, you know, base everything you're, you're working on on what you previously learned. Always keep on learning, keep on changing things. So uh, I've got a little bit of an edge right here. It's not bad, uh, but I'm not gonna mess with it now because I'm gonna uh, come along and keep on adding different uh, colors onto this. And when it's all said and done, I am going to run over this whole thing with, get, wait for it, the new product, Edge Master. A product me and Simon came up with for shaving graphic edges down. I wanna get rid of this just because I don't need any, any extra edges on my paint job. And uh, we're not putting a gloss clear on it and we're not pinstriping it. But still, I'd rather this be smooth when people feel the final matte finish on it. So that being said, and uh, me talking enough to allow the paint to dry just a little bit longer, um, you know, and that's strategy also. When you're painting something, I will paint up to like a lunch break. Paint to going home and say, like, if I need something to really, really sit overnight, then I make sure I do everything else. I don't paint that at 12 in the afternoon. I paint it at 5, do something else at 12 I need to work on later. Move things around, you'll be surprised at you know, using your lunch break, not just to have lunch, but okay, that paint has to dry. And it's a lot better than that than, oh, the paint's drying, and I'm like, oh, paint's drying? Uh, mm, you know, Facebook. So um, you, you wanna make sure you're, you're using your time to the best of your abilities. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and bring up my reference image and start masking off with the black. Uh, which is uh, looking at my reference image real quick. Da, 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 where is it? There. We've got the front brows as well as these slotted like chevrons or scallops up in the top. And then of course the silver on the side. I gotta max those off. And then, uh, and let us not forget, or as the British say, leave us not forget little area back there. I'm gonna do that, that silver, which means it's gotta go black first. This, by the way, is not going silver. This is staying paint. This is gonna be silver, so it matches this. So because of that, which is the other side, we gotta paint it black first. So just giving the rundown on it, and now I'm gonna start masking. Got enough masking on here for what I'm doing, and as you see, I've masked off my silver area right there using, love this uh, gold tape, very easy to squinch into certain areas. Mask off the back area, the appropriate areas there, and then I, uh, using a black Stabilo pencil, I just drew out the eyebrows and then those scallops on there. Um, did I measure them in precisely in computer cut? <sighs> this is supposed to have the look of someone that just made their own helmet anyway, so I kind of did the same thing. Is it balanced and appropriate? It's close enough. Uh, if you want to do a computer cutout, that's fine. Computer cutouts are difficult when dealing with compound curves like on a helmet. It's a pain, but if you're already set up to do that, let's put it this way, whatever floats your boat. If you're faster with a computer and a plotter, I know some artists that are, then go for it. If you're doing 40 helmets, do it, just because then it's production. Okay, and if it's not a perfect, guess what? This is going to be thrashed and eroded anyway. So I'm unmasking. I already cut these, and now I'm just peeling up the, the tape with my X-Acto blade. 
and always be really careful when cutting. This is one of those few times where, let's say I didn't, I wasn't careful and I screwed up and I cut too deep and it lifted some of the paint, <laughs> it'll probably end up saving me time on, on uh, eroding the surface because that's, that's the kind of look this kind of has. It's an old, not really, a, if it's put this way, the way bo helmet look is bitchin', but if I ever painted a customer's motorcycle helmet like that, I'd be, I'd be fired. So, um, I mean, come on, there's no pinstriping bo what are we thinking? But we're going to go ahead and mimic that design. Okay, I scratched this by accident a little bit. So you can see how the paint, I had done that with the, I basically had a fit with the blade, and it scratched it, but it ended up working for me on this. Not that big a deal. And when you scratch the paint or damage the paint, it can lift on you. And as I mentioned in this situation, not the end of the world. Already, now you say, well, what about uh, this? I, you know, I didn't, I, I ran out of the big thick tape. I didn't really want to waste the little tape and I'm not going to paper that. I'm just, uh, it's not that big a deal, I'm using an airbrush. Plus, if it gets bad, I just scuff that area. So it comes down to it. all the tape I have on here is what I needed. So I'm going to focus on, let me turn around here so you can see it better. Come in and aim the air, aim the airbrush away from any areas that are important and put a light coat of the black down first. And this is the black sealer. Might as well use it. it sticks really good. And then I hit this, same thing, light coat over the blue. This is all going to be silver when it's done. Now I'm looking at this and I'm like, wait a second. That black misted, that color right there I'm getting, the black over the blue, that's really close to what I kind of want for this later on. You know, the dark area and the dark area back here. So one thing I'm going to do is when I unmask everything and I remask those areas to spray, I'm just going to mist on some, uh, some of this. I'm not even going to make another color up. That'll work. Or maybe I'll mix up black with that blue. I don't know. It might look different. I kind of like that. You know, I have to come back in and really hammer it to get the black to show up and get rid of the blue. But I kind of like that unevenness because on the helmet itself, it had that kind of uneven quality going on. That, this area back here. This is more of a larger area. Let me see if I can actually create a subtle dark blue by doing that. Oh yeah, we're so, we're so doing that. That's just going to work out really good anyway. So that's how we'll do the, the darker part of the helmet. I'll thin it down a bit more so it's harder for me. That way it, it'll give me an evener gradation. But see, I just saved a step. Saved a whole, mixing a whole color. Get this guy over here. He's got to be all black. When we come in with the silver. Now, am I going to unmask all this and then remask for the silver? No, that would be really, really dumb. So I'm going to wait for this to dry. And then what I'll do is I will be very careful about these areas, probably hand over them and hit it with quicksilver. That quicksilver, it flies around, sticks to everything. So those are done. The back is done. Now we're going to make these solid black up here. Now these actually are going to stay black. I'm not getting the silver. Now I'm using a gun with a fan pattern? Nah. Small enough area you won't notice the, any uh, irregularities in coverage that you would get from an airbrush because it doesn't spray in the pan pattern. At the same time, any irregularities will probably look better on this helmet. Do I want to put a lot of paint on here? No. Why am I using the airbrush? It's here, it's easy, it's cheap, it's fast, easier to clean. Also, low mill thickness, very, very, very small amount of paint. Now, I felt that edge that was sprayed on here by Chris, and he only did one and a half coats with a small gun. There was not going to be an edge on this. I mean, you can differentiate it only because you can feel one ten thousandth of an inch. Trust me, one ten thousandth of an inch doesn't count. So, very, very low mill thickness, less material, less time, easier cleanup. I'm going to let that dry a little bit. These guys have been drying also. So to save time, when I decide to come in here with the silver, I'm going to do all the silver all at once. I will just, I'll probably pick a little piece of paper and cover up this because I don't want any silver to encroach onto my black design. Then we'll unmask it all and see how it looks, in which case the only two things we have left to do is that darker blue. I'm going to darken with the black. And we've got a gray for the actual eyes. These are the eyebrows of the, of the eagle or town, whatever that creature it is. So, cool. Be back in a bit. 
Okay, I finished up my masking. As you see, I, 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 I was too lazy to go to the, the paper machine, so it's like, hey, paper towels. It's not, it, it's not gonna be wet there, it's gonna be dry. I just needed something to temporarily protect some areas. So this is my Whiskey Tango masking job. Going to come in with a scotch Bright. Now, this is not necessary for adhesion. I'm doing this actually to aid in the effect of the metal. I'm going in one direction on the sides, and that's actually, if I go through some of the black and get to the blue, that's okay. I'm using this just to create the illusion of brushed metal. And I'm only doing it on the parts that are going to get the silver. Like this one's going to go in that direction. This has already got a little bit of a grain anyway, so it'll be fine. This is stained black. I'm not going to touch that. This is for the other side of the helmet. So of course I got to do the same treatment I did to the little side piece here. Just using the scotch Bright. And this piece is same. This is the underside of the heads up display. So I'm just kind of scuffing it a little bit. That's it. That all said and done, I'm going to take my clean out airbrush, make sure there's nothing in it. Quicksilver does not like other things. I mean, you can mix candies into it, but for what we're doing, we don't want to add anything to it. We don't want to add any reducer. Why? It says it right here. Somewhere. Do not add reducer. Water. Apply straight, sorry, my finger hit. I, I paint over it right there. Do not reduce. And make sure you spill as much as possible on you. Let me wipe my hand off. There we go. Okay. Ready to spray. Now, it actually splattered a little bit on the helmet. Hey, we already started our patina work. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just... Luckily, we're not going for perfection here. Stick that back on the stick. And you can see how just a little bit of this Quicksilver, just a small amount. I'm barely at like partial trigger. It already has like a black chrome look to it. Already looking pretty cool. I want a little bit more than that, so I'm going to hit it with some, a little bit harder. Do not get it too wet. If you get it wet, it will model, and it doesn't look like silver. Then it looks kind of like a weird modeled silver. So let that sit and dry. This piece is going to get silver treatment. I'll do be doing some stippling and speckling on this too. this off to the side and this guy gets some silver treatment I don't want it to be bright bright so I'm not going to do probably more than just this on it multiple coats is would be necessary to get it really bright now we're not going for the reflective chrome look uh, we're actually down the road we're going to be doing a t800 now get a little precursor we're going to do a t800 terminal head that we had 3d printed by my buddy walter over in vegas we're going to be doing that one and we're going to go with high reflectivity version of quicksilver it's going to be badass got a mandalorian helmet we're going to be doing that's going to be high reflectivity uh, this this is thrashed i mean it's going to have this like sandblasted weathered look so therefore that's why i didn't go over a gloss black you have to go over gloss black to get that really high reflectivity. Um, and but we're going we went over just the, the not, not only was it not gloss, I scuffed the heck out of it. So I made it even less gloss. Let me come in here and hit this side piece. See, I got a little, couple little stipples there. <laughs> Big deal. Actually, probably looks good. I'll probably stipple the rest of it for the heck of it. Again, airbrush works great for this. Even if I'm going over a larger area, I still would use an airbrush or a small spray gun because this material, you, the less is more with Quicksilver. And I always say, go really, really lightly because if you go in real heavy, you go in lightly, you're like, oh man, that's perfect. I'm glad I didn't go in heavy because you can always add more silver. You cannot take it away. You, you can come over and display black on top of it again, but you know, you just wasted a bunch of time.
And we can't forget the back area. This guy back here. Now, this area we had some issues back here. We kind of dig out some things in the 3D print. I used a grinder and I forgot. You gotta go real slow with the grinder on these because uh, it's a heated filament 3D print. So when you get it really hot with the grinder, what's it do? Freaking melts. And so it's no big deal because we're gonna come in and black that area out in the, in the gaps there. Plus this is gonna, it looks even more eroded and thrashed. There we go. That's good. Let me compare this one to the one I already did. It looks a little bit, now when you're spraying it, you're gonna look at it and say, oh, the silver's perfect. And all of a sudden it got a little bit darker. Yeah, this is fresh black we put on here. It's not that old. And the black is gonna leach up into the silver a little bit when you get it wet. So I will come in and put another little color, you know, light coat on it. Not much, because I don't need it to be that much brighter. This one actually doesn't need it. This one looks good the way it is. And uh, this, a uh, little bit more on this guy. There we go. Let's see how the rest of this is doing. The other side looks good over here. Yeah, I could use a little bit more silver. Try and look at all the angles. Make sure you didn't miss an angle. You'll notice it after you unmask it. That's always the fun part. And that's about it for the silver. I am going to show you how we can do a little bit of texturing ahead of time. Just that way we don't need to come back in and worry about texture going on the outside. Some of the uh, effect, the patina effect we're doing is universal. In the metal, it's not necessarily that. So I'm going to come in with just black. And I got a reduced version of the black here. I'm going to pull the trigger back and do some stippling. See a little splatter. I don't know if you can see that in the camera. It creates just a little bit of a splatter. That's enough. Same thing with this. This guy does not want to stay on his stick. Stay on stick. Stipple. A little stipple here. That's about it. Uh, now, when these are dry, I'll even probably hit them with a scotch bright a little bit to knock some of that silver, scratch the silver good. Now, could I use a stick in front of my airbrush and create a stipple? Yeah, I could. It goes everywhere. I only need a small amount of it. It is now. All i got to clean up is my table. I'll just wipe this down when I'm done. Little specks everywhere. And we'll do the exact same thing on the side here. Little stipple, stipple. Just make it look pitted, like pitted and thrash metal. And just dirt and stuff has got in there. We'll come in and do some staining and some other stuff. I just, with all the white and I don't want too much black, and I don't want it to look like it's, if you have it so it's flared out from an area you're working on, that looks like it's sprayed. It doesn't look like it's been actually pitted. So in this situation, I will do my pitting with it masked off. And then I'll do it again out here and let some of it get onto this. And then last but not least, the back piece. I'm gonna get some stipple on this. I might even come in and darken up some of the, see how you can spray the black on top of that to darken it? And a little bit on the sides. That looks kind of cool. And that, that helps because it's already masked. So you think of all the stuff you want to do while it's still masked. I will also come in with a silver. And do a little stippling of, with the Quicksilver too. And that gives additional texture on top of all this. So I could... Come on, stay on your stick. Stay in your lane. There we go. Put a little bit of stipple onto that. Not much, just a little bit. You do it once on something, you gotta do it on all of it. Otherwise it might look different. 
Same thing back here on this one. And this guy gets a little too. Not much. We'll show more of the actual patina work and, uh, and texturing and aging. We're going to create some scars. We're going to show how you do that with a combination of an airbrush and uh, a sponge even, uh, a normal brush. Uh, are we going to do actual scratching techniques on it? Probably not, because when you do something this harsh as a scratching technique, I may go down too far and it wouldn't look as good. I mean, real, real uh, delamination and scratches, that's a whole nother level of patina work. When it's getting really inspected close, you want the paint to be peeling and stuff. That's cool, but that is a whole nother level. We're doing what's considered a surface treatment. It looks like it's damaged pitted metal. It actually isn't. You know, uh, the, the helmet that we did for Boba Fett here had that, you know, the indentation on Boba Fett's helmet. It's painted on our helmet. It's actually not an indentation. Some helmets actually have the indentation in them. So in this situation, we're dealing with just a surface or a cursory version of patina and texturing. Um, I'm going to go ahead and unmask this so you can see it before we go on to the next step. And besides that, I'm going to let everything else dry. This stuff, be careful with the Quicksilver. It looks dry, and then you touch it and you leave fingerprints in it. So uh, let, it let it sit and dry. You'll also notice it shines up when it dries. That's okay for this. If it's like, oh, I wouldn't want it to be that shiny, just hit it with some, some Scotch Brite and it won't be shiny anymore. We're also going to scuff it for another reason. When I come back and hit this, it'll, um, it's kind of fresh right now to do it. When I hit it, it'll take away a little bit of that paint around the edges and let the black come through and give it that worn thrash look. So we're going to actually create physical damage using Scotch Brites and stuff, but we're also going to paint and fake in damage as well. So. Hope you're having fun. I am. And uh, let me get to unmasking.